Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the STL Squata 1 FY24 earnings conference call. I am Pankaj Dhawan, Head Investor Relations at STL. To take us through the results and answer your questions, we have Ankit Agarwal, Managing Director STL and Tushar Shroff, Group CFO STL. Please note that all participant lines are in the listen only mode as of now. There will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Please note that this call is being recorded. You can also download a copy of presentation from our website at www.stl.tech. Before we proceed with this call, I would like to add that some elements of today's presentation may be forward looking in nature and must be viewed in relation to the risk pertaining to the business. The safe harbor clause indicated in the presentation also applies to this conference call. For opening remarks, I now hand over the call to Ankit Agarwal. Over to you, Ankit. Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our call uh, for Q1 FY24 earnings call today. So just to re reiterate, uh, our strategic priorities uh, for STL remain the same and are as follows. Firstly, we will continue to grow the optical business by increasing OFC market share and the connectivity attached rate that we've been speaking about. We've also started projects to optimize our raw material and fixed costs in the business to become more competitive. Secondly, we shall continue to consolidate global services in the segments of our choice. We are building new capabilities for value added services. We are also working to improve the UK operations profitability that we've touched on earlier. Last but not the least, we shall build the digital business through focused investments in new technologies and capabilities. Let's first touch on the optical business. The 5G de deployments continue to remain strong globally. As of June 2023, a total of 532 operators in 160 countries have invested in 5G networks with over 254 operators having launched commercial 5G services. At least 41 carriers in 20 countries have launched standalone 5G networks. There are already 1.1 billion 5G subscribers in the world, which is expected to reach 1.5 billion by the end of this year. Leading the 5G deployments is China, which plans to increase its 5G base stations from 2.3 million to 2.9 million by the end of 2023. Also, fiber to the home deployments continue to remain strong. In the US, the number of homes passed in 2023 is likely to remain at similar levels as 2022. As examples, Frontier Communications passed 339,000 homes in quarter one, 2023, up by 60% over quarter one, 2022, while AT&T added 600,000 locations in quarter one, 2023. In the UK, 4.7 million home passes are expected in this year. Similarly, in Germany, Deutsche Telekom plans to pass another 3 million homes in 2023. Lastly, China continues to deploy fiber, now more and more for fiber to the room applications to prepare for AI and Internet of Things. The Biden administration has recently announced the distribution of funding of over $4.2 billion, the BEAT program. The funding shall be used to primarily deploy last mile fiber networks. The funds are expected to flow to states early next year and shall start to fund projects by the middle of 2024. In total, government plans to spend close to 100 billion in building broadband connectivity by 2030. We expect the excess inventory to correct and grow to come back by the end of the year. Therefore, we remain committed to the US market and continue to broaden our customer base. <clears throat> In this regard, we have recently announced our partnership with Windstream, a privately held communications and software company. Our collaboration started in February 2021. We will provide them with advanced optical designs like high fiber count, intelligently bonded ribbon and flat ribbon in addition to loose tube cables. These products are designed to ensure faster rollout and superior network longevity, which aligns perfectly with the Windstream's requirements. I'm also happy to share that China Mobile has announced the results for 2023-24 tender. 
the tender volume is at 108 million fiber kilometers. While it is lower than last year, the, the previous tender was actually extended beyond 12 months. The final settled average weighted price remains unchanged from last year in local RMB terms. The big five players in China got a majority of the tender volumes, which is very positive, which will lead to consolidation in the China market. <coughs> the tender award shall mitigate any price risk that we see out of China in the near term. In addition to the China Mobile, China Telecom has also announced a tender of 50 million fiber kilometers, which are happy to share that is higher than last year. Now coming to the demand outlook, as per CRU, the medium term demand in optical fiber cable volumes expected to go up to 638 million fiber kilometers by 2027, up from 535 million in 2022. In the short term, however, as expected, global OFC demand is contracted by 3.4% in H1 2023. Particularly in North America, demand contracted by 11%. However, the demand grew in Europe, Asia, excluding China, as well as the rest of the world. Our market share remained stable at 11% in H1 of calendar year 2023 versus H1 of calendar year 2022. Our connectivity business also remains stable at 10%. We expect OFC market share to grow from H224 onwards. We also strongly feel that new products in the connectivity business should see a jump in attach rate from H2 FY24 onwards. Coming to the financials for the optical business, in Q1 FY24, revenue stands at 1,112 crores, which is lower by 2% on year-on-year -year basis. O OFC volume is lower on Q1Q -on -Q basis, and OFC realization is also lower on Q1Q -on -Q basis due to change in geographical mix away from North America. Even though revenue has gone down, EBITDA has gone up by 53% year-on-year basis to 246 crores. EBITDA margins for Q1 FY24 stand at 22.1%. We have reduced our operating costs on Q1 Q basis to mitigate the realization impact. Going ahead in Q2, we are taking the following actions to grow and maintain our operational profitability. Number one, we are taking actions to increase our share in EMEA, India and APAC markets to fill some of the volume gap from the US market. We continue to drive new product development approval and commercialization in the optical connectivity business. And we have engaged a tier one management consulting firm to further optimize our operating costs. We expect these actions to start showing results from second half of this financial year. Now let's discuss the progress in the global services business. In quarter one of FY24, in line with our strategy to win profitable projects, with optimal fund involvement, we have won two key orders. The first one, we are a system integrator to provide the ICT infrastructure for data centers and for remote sites, along with the responsibility of operations and maintenance. In the second order, we shall, we shall supply optical fiber cables and shall do the fiber rollout for 5G deployment in multiple circles for one of the largest Indian private telecom operators. We expect BharatNet Phase 3 tenders to be released in second half of this financial year. As a result, we also expect our order inflow to increase as we go through the rest of this year. In the global services, Q1 FY24 now revenue stands at 353 crores. EBITDA has gone up by 27% on year-on-year -year basis to 28 crores due to a favorable project mix. The EBITDA margin at Q1 FY24 stands at 7.9% in line with our expectations. Our project execution in the services business is on track. Among Indian public projects, our BharatNet project state of Telangana is 65% complete, including all packages. The network modernization project is 68% complete. The fiber rollout project is 3% complete. The new managed services project is 12% complete. And additionally, we've just started the data center project that I spoke about. In the Indian private side, fiber rollout projects for a large 
tier one telecom operators 20 20% complete for phase three. Fiber rollout for another large telecom operator, phase two is 28% complete. And finally, the fiber rollout for a modern optical network for another Indian private customers, 58% complete. Coming to the UK, fiber to the home rollout in the UK for projects combined is at 31% complete. We shall now talk about the updates for STL Digital business. In STL Digital, we are continuing to grow with momentum. We acquired new customers in the US and Indian across technology and service industry verticals. We have more than 20 plus active customers at the end of Q1 FY24. We also had a very strong deal inflow in the quarter one of FY24. We are happy to announce that we have signed strategic partnership with SAP and Google to offer the solutions jointly to our customers. We have also expanded our delivery team to 950 plus consultants and our open order book is also very healthy at 900 plus crores. In line with our expectations and despite a tough industry environment, we have grown our revenues on Q1Q basis to 62 crores. Our EBITDA loss for Q1 is at 37 crores. We expect to maintain this growth momentum, but at the same time, we also expect the losses to go down as the revenue ramp up increases. I now hand over to Tushar to talk about the financials. Thanks, Ankit. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Q1 24 revenue up by 2% on year on year basis to rupees 1522 crores. EBITDA grew by 42% on year on year basis to rupees 235 crores. EBITDA margin increased correspondingly to 15.4% net profit after minority interest and share of joint venture increased by 156% on year on year basis to rupees 46 crores in terms of new orders in optical business we continue to win multi million dollar orders for optical fiber cable in europe and americas we have already talked about new orders in service business in previous slides in terms of a revenue mix, it has shifted to EMEA and India in Q1 FY24 in line with our guidance in previous quarter. Our open order book at the end of Q1 FY24 is rupees 10,938 crores. Our order book is well diversified across our customer segment and also across all our businesses. We have placed an abridged version of our reported numbers for your reference. Our net debt is stable on quarter on quarter basis. Also, we have filed a demerger of service business with stock exchange. We expect to complete the demerger by first quarter of next year, next financial year. Based on, based on current US OFC industry situation, we are revising our revenue guidance to seven to 9% growth for full year. However, we are still targeting net debt to EBITDA to be at two and a half times. On this particular slide, one major update is our ESG rating by MSCI has gone up from triple B to A, which is positive. In summary, I would like to say that we shall target to gain the market share across our focus market, particularly in EMEA, India, EPEC markets to fill the volume gap from US market. We shall also optimize our operating cost to maintain the operating profitability. In global services, we continue to move towards the value added services with improved margin and fund involvement. In digital business, we shall Consciously invest to grow the revenue and reduce the EBITDA losses on a quarter on quarter basis. Last but not the least, we are targeting to grow 7 to 9% in FY24 with reduced net to debit, net debt to EBITDA at two and a half times by the end of financial year. With this, 
we come to the end of our commentary and we shall now open for Q&A. Ladies and gentlemen, please note that if you want to ask a question, you can click on the raise hand and we shall take your questions one by one. Also, you can send us your question in chat. So we'll take the first question from the line of Mr. Mohit. Mohit, you can ask your question now. Jayesh, can you enable Mohit to speak? Yes. Uh, hi, am I audible? Yeah, yes. yeah, Mohit, please go ahead. Hi, uh, thanks for the opportunity. So my you know, first question is on the North America business, right? I mean, there seems to be some slowdown there, which we have also indicated. So can you give us some color? You know, what is uh, driving this slowdown? Is there, uh, there's a slowdown in 5G? Is the adoption slower? Uh, is the CapEx investments have gone down by the telecom players? So what is driving the slowdown in uh, North America because of sure. the inventory has also got built up? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mohit. Uh, so I think as we shared, even at the end of our uh, previous quarter uh, results, uh, and we've reiterated now, uh, we do see uh, some slowdown in terms of our sales, uh, specifically in, in North America. Uh, I think there are two or three elements that are playing out. Uh, I think number one is, as we had shared last time and we reiterate, uh, broadly there is uh, still inventory uh, with uh, tier one, tier two players uh, in the market. So as they start, uh, you know, depleting that inventory, we do expect the demand to come back up. Currently, we do see that probably uh, uh, the depletion of that inventory will still take a quarter or two. So our own view is that we should start seeing good demand coming back in North America, probably in Q3 and Q4 onwards. Uh, the second point is from the operator perspective, uh, it's probably still taken time to scale up uh, the uh, deployment speed. Uh, that is still taking some time uh, in terms of availability of skilled manpower and execution capability that's probably been slower than what uh, the customers expected and then of course lastly because of the you know higher interest rates and inflation uh, i would say there's some level of uh, caution from the operators in terms of really ensuring they are doing the right projects but at a macro level, I want to reassure that overall in our conversation with customers and what they have put out publicly, they continue to be committed towards long-term deployment of fiber networks for all three elements, whether it is linked to 5G, whether it is linked fiber to the home, or it is for data centers. All of the uh, requirements continue to be there, continue to be strong. One other part that we just shared was in terms of the bead uh, that has been announced in terms of $42 billion. There has been discussions about allocation to the various states for the connectivity. Uh, our view is the demand linked to the beat will come in at some point in sec in uh, in half of uh, FY uh, calendar year 24 is when we should start seeing some positive demand linked to that. Uh, sure, and that's very helpful, Ankit. Uh, my one other question is, you know, there's a massive improvement in the gross margin. So is it that also a function of change in geography mix uh, because uh, your raw material consumption will be lesser or is it like the raw materials have cooled off as a whole so just wanted to and once the demand comes back will this again go back to previous levels once the demand in north america comes back uh, so mohit i uh, i would like to address this particular question if you see that you know the material cost percentage has gone down mainly because of the the prices of some of the material has gone down as well as we have been working on optimizing the consumption of the work, some of the our key raw materials, correct? Which is also helping us in driving the overall material cost. So there are two parts to it. Structurally, we see that there is a price price impact as well as the consumption impact in overall material cost. Uh, sure. And uh, last one, if I may. So uh, there's an open order book of 900 crores for STL Digital. Uh, so mm -hmm. can you give us the average tenure of uh, this order book? Three to five years. So, so uh, the average is about three to five years uh, because it's uh, over a period of five years. So uh, we sign the long-term contracts with the customer and we continue to provide uh, the services over a period of three to five years. 
Okay, sure. That's all helpful. Thank you for answering my questions. Thank you, Mohit. Thanks, Mohit. Uh, we'll take the next question from the line of Mr. Bala Subramanian. Uh, you can ask your question now. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Sir, uh, one of your competitor mentioned uh, optical fiber. Yeah. Optical fiber prices have been uh, declined by 10 to 15%. And uh, other uh, expenses also has been decreased by 10 to 15 percent. That's why the margin improvement will be there in this quarter. Whether this will be sustainable in upcoming quarters and optical networking side also, we have witnessed 22.1 percent margins, uh, which is higher uh, compared to past four to five quarters. So, uh, like, how do we see uh, the margin side in upcoming quarters? Yeah, also, I... also, please provide the realizations in the market for OF and OFC uh, side. That would be really helpful. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Basu. So, uh, you know, firstly, I would say that, uh, you know, we are, uh, we continue to be focused as we shared, we do expect, uh, you know, healthy mix between the various geographies, uh, given some of the lower sales that is we, that we have seen in Q1 and we will also see in Q2, uh, we are actively focused and also improving our sales in other markets. As we have shared uh, through our presentations and previous discussions, we do uh, uh, we do experience higher realizations in us market so to that extent our share uh, our and volumes increase in other markets the average realization for stl would come down uh, so that is our current expectation probably for q2 and we would need to see how our volumes uh, come back in us as i mentioned probably in q3 or q4 so i think it'll be a function of these things um, in uh, in our current quarter, our realizations uh, specifically for cable, I can mention, continue to be steady. It has come down marginally, as I said, because of the mix uh, slightly away from US. Uh, but I still believe that uh, looking at our focus, our priorities on improving our volumes, uh, which will be a focus for us going forward, we do see a good balance of other geographies as well. And Bala, uh, just to address your, uh, you know, very specific questions on a gross margin, as uh, as I said, uh, we continue to work to optimize our material cost, correct? By by looking at the consumption of key raw material, we have engaged uh, the leading management consulting firm to help us out in terms of optimizing the 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 productivity in terms of ensuring the better yields, uh, as well as we are also looking at, uh, you know, the right uh, prices for some of the key raw materials that we procure. Got it, sir. Sir, on that, uh, apart from uh, North America, any other countries uh, we are facing slowdown on that export side? So uh, the, yeah. if you could uh, throw some light on that, that, that sure. would be really helpful. No, so I, I think we continue to see uh, good demand in uh, in uh, in Middle East, in India, in, in parts of APAC. We have seen slight uh, slowdown in uh, Europe market, uh, but that we think uh, should come back uh, faster. Uh, specifically, I think again there it has linked to you know high inflation and high interest rates, which have uh, taken some period of pause. Also, typically uh, we also seeing in Q2, for example, uh, August month and parts of September are also slower months in Europe generally uh, in terms of execution of projects. So we're looking at these elements, but overall, I would say that we're still bullish uh, on Europe market. We do expect that to bounce back. It is also a market where we have good amount of sales of our optical interconnect. So that's also something that we are bullish that will grow from H2 onwards. Okay, sir. Sir, on that uh, digital and uh, technology side, so we made uh, uh, this quarter 62 crore rupees. So we may see the uh, we may see the same kind of run rate uh, for next three quarters. So I think what we can share about digital definitely, as as you can see, we are we are really getting good order book, good commitment from you know high quality customers, uh, you know particularly in US and other markets. So I think that gives us confidence on the on the underlying business and the value we are creating for the customers. Uh, what I would say is, as we had shared last time also, our, our focus is to make the business uh, break even by quarter four. Uh, that's that's the current priority. Uh, may, and that will happen by further scaling up the revenue and covering the fixed costs and other costs. So that's something that, uh, you know, the leadership here, Raman, is, is focused on. 
and we are confident the way the orders are progressing and the customer conversations that we should break even by Q4. Uh, thank you so much, sir. That's it from me. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mala. Uh, we'll take the next question from the line of Pratik Singhania. Pratik, you can ask your question now. Yeah, hi, Ankit and Tushar. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Uh, my question is with respect to optical uh, fiber connect uh, business, interconnect business. So as compared to what we had uh, planned at the start of the year and the actuals which uh, are being reported, there's quite a bit of divergence into uh, our expectation at the start of the year. So what steps are we doing to, to rectify that? Uh, how can we grow this business? Uh, uh, further as compared to its uh, full potential? Yeah, well, good, good question, Pratik. I think uh, absolutely right. At some, at some uh, In the past, we had looked at how do we scale up this business probably even faster. Um, I think some of our learnings that we did share last quarter as well is that the whole cycle that it takes from, you know, uh, understanding the customer's problems, creating some unique innovation, creating the IP, getting that approved through the technical cycle of the customers and then getting large scale, then trial rollout and larger scale rollout. I think that whole time period has probably been longer than we initially expected. We are much more mindful of, of the entire cycle now. Um, having said that, we are uh, definitely in trials with uh, with various customers globally. Um, and so it's, it's one of those things where as more and more of our customers get comfortable and we successfully pass through this trial phase, we do expect uh, you know good volumes to come up for the products. Uh, what another thing that we have done is very proactively invest both in the product development as well as the team development for this business. So very happy to share that we have got on board some very strong talent globally to help scale up this business. And on the customer end, we are also adding resources who are very comfortable with this product portfolio and really is looking at that package solution of cable as well as the interconnect together for our customers. So I'm confident that probably by Q3, Q4, we should see some improvement in sales. And certainly going into next year, we are even more confident that the sales will come up. So I agree with you in summary, I think versus what we had thought of, uh, what we had thought of how this would scale up, there's been a lag. I think we've taken some of the learnings and I'm confident of our actions that this will start stepping up as we particularly go into H2 of this year. So based on the revised uh, uh, plan in terms of the scale and the execution, what kind of an exit quarterly run rate you see by say uh, FY24 end and by FY25 end? Uh, we are not sharing uh, that kind of forecast, uh, uh, Pradeep, currently. Uh, what we had shared was about our vision of you know getting to an, uh, a high attach rate, if you remember in the past. Uh, right. Versus that, as you can understand, today we are at a 10% attach rate. What I can share is clearly our intention would be to scale that up. Uh, you know, we both see that as an important lever with our customers. And as we have shared, the margins on our interconnect are closer to 30%. So there's clearly an intent to scale it up also from a bottom line perspective. Right. My uh, question would be with respect to the consultant that we have hired. So what kind of... Uh, conservative cost uh, uh, cutting initiatives that you have taken would uh, result into and by when we can see the results percolating in our financials? So, so uh, we won't be able to share too many details, with you, but what I can share is, uh, it's a, as, it, as I said, it's a tier one consultant who has experience uh, uh, specifically working with us on optimization of all our costs, also looking at our consumption. Uh, we had shared in the past where we had certain uh, you know, raw materials and gases, which add high cost for us. So we have been actively working with the consultant for a few months now. Uh, we do expect some of these benefits to start flowing in in H2 of this year. Uh, and some of it will come in quarter two as well. As, as we progress, we will share our overall cost improvements. We won't be able to share things directly linked to any specific consultant. Uh, so uh, if you can quantify how many BIPs uh, of uh, EBITDA margin you are uh, envisaging because of this entire exercise of cost cut uh, cost initiatives. So I think, uh, 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 you know, overall, uh, you know, the, the, the entire management team is presently working on it. 
so the 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 kind of you know the the savings that we have been looking at is some of the savings are under the uh, the the evaluation stage so at this point in time we will not be able to actually quantify in terms of that whatever is the total savings that will that will be able to generate because these are uh, technical matters and which requires a uh, thoughtful uh, evaluation before implementing any changes correct so that's why at this point in time it is too early for us to quantify any kind of a savings that we are planning to uh, accrue for this particular financial year but definitely the team is working on it uh, the, there are different projects different teams uh, which are working on various aspect uh, material costs material consumptions uh, indirect spends yeah. so a uh, lot of other areas that we have been working on to optimize the overall cost structure for onb business okay and my final question if i may push uh, one more so in terms of the uh, business environment in us mm. as compared to uh, last uh, con call when we had discussed uh, the environment uh, to be a weaker for a couple of quarters as compared to last quarter uh, the scenario remains exactly same uh, worsen or be better like what is the uh, yeah. uh, feel over there no good good question i would say uh, so i think on the positive side i think there is more clarity now with the announcement of beat right so i think that's clearly a massive quantum 42 and a half billion dollars there's more clarity now around how many which states will get what kind of allocation how will the flow happen and a lot of that will now start getting worked out um, and and clearly we think at least 20% of that quantum uh, there will be procurement and and so a deployment starting to link to that starting in uh, kind of mid of next year so i think that's positive from a market perspective Uh, and clearly, as we've said in the past, a vast portion of that will be directly optical fiber as as the medium for connectivity. Um, on the uh, again, uh, the uh, most of the telecom operators have reiterated their focus on optical fiber and fiber deployment. So we continue to track that uh, very closely. Um, I think what we had shared is that probably for two quarters at that point, we had shared that we see it taking time to go through the inventory. I would only add that uh, that continues to be the case. Whether it's two quarters or three quarters is the only X factor in our view. Uh, so we are watching that closely. We'll certainly update you probably in in the next uh, you know in, during the next set of results. Uh, but certainly nothing more has significantly changed. Our own interactions with customers remain very strong, as you would have seen with, for example, with our windstream press release. Customers are really appreciating our product portfolio, our innovation, the fact that we are now manufacturing locally in the U.S. and supporting made in America. So I think these things are, are going quite well for us. Great, thank you so much for answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Prati. Thanks, Prati. Uh, we'll take the next question from the line of uh, Mr. Kaushik Poddar. Kaushik, you may ask your question now. Yeah, uh, my question is with regard to the uh, debt EBITDA ratio of three point five that you have projected to be at three point five at the end of this year. No, Kaushik, so, I think uh, it is two point five. That is what we are looking at targeting. Two point five. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. two point five. So, will you be able to attend this with the current uh, uh, state uh, state of operation, or you have factored in a rights issue or something of that sort? yeah so i think it's a mix of two things uh, one is uh, with respect to our current operations uh, you know uh, it is mainly from the current operations at this point in time because we are also working on cost optimization project and uh, you know how effectively we are able to serve our customer in terms of the cost uh, so that's that's something that we have been working on i think that also should start accruing uh, over a period of time and that should drive us in terms of you know generating better cash and should be able to reduce uh, uh, our debt uh, similarly we are on a gsb side uh, we have clear focus on execution uh, if we have been able to complete some of the projects in terms of a better execution there will be a will be achieving some of the milestone critical milestone mm -hmm. uh, that also will be able to help us in terms of releasing some cash uh, which is blocked in some of this project so these are the two levers that uh, you know that should help us out in terms of releasing the cash and reducing the debt to ebitda and and also as, as some of the losses in service um it services um, in our digital business comes down yeah to that extent that would improve our, our ebitda so you don't have any rice issue in the immediate future right 
as of now we continue to pursue but uh, 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 we have not factored in this particular working at this point in time okay and uh, this us business uh, i mean us is talking of uh, about um, um, uh, making india making us products and all those things so does that help you help you to, uh, with your operation in us do you stand a better chance in the bids that are to be uh, uh, that are to be bid out in uh, next year or something yeah so i would say broadly koshik that's been the whole strategic intent of why we set up the cable factory there we set up it's really a world class facility we've set up there we're very proud of it um, and the whole intent there was to provide you know world class service locally to you know tier 1 tier 2 operators hyperscalers etc um, that certainly i would say uh, helped us in terms of our branding and positioning uh, and really providing that you know quick turnaround quick service to the customers and again to reiterate you know customers like winstream coming on board uh, and being proud of the partnership so uh, that's the whole intent again with projects either with our current customers or large projects with bead the whole intent is to support those projects through our local manufacturing and on the capex front uh, is uh, is the peak of capex behind us and uh, from next year onwards there will be hardly any capex is that the way to read uh, so i would say uh, see currently we are in that range uh, if you see uh, last year we were in the range of about 400 even this year we talked about 350 400 uh, but i think also linked to what tushar just mentioned looking very closely our net debt ebitda etc we are reevaluating all the capex even for this year uh, and going forward uh, we really want to make sure that uh, you know we generate cash as a business and then can reduce our debt so i think those are elements that we are just balancing uh, but overall the first priority is whatever capacity we have set up uh, to make sure that we utilize those fully uh, as uh, given the current uh, lower volumes of q1 etc the first focus is to ensure we get the right customers right orders and we fill up our factories okay thank you thank you thank you koshik thanks koshik we'll take the question from the line of uh, mr sunny gosser sunny you can ask your question now yeah thanks uh, for the opportunity uh, and uh, i had a couple of questions so first is on the us market so uh, we were doing about 750 crore plus kind of quarterly revenue run rate in us uh, which has dropped below 450 crores uh, in this quarter uh, so uh, although i understand that the demand is soft so but how should we look at uh, uh, in terms of numbers so uh, when this bounces back say like in q3 or q4 do we expect to go back to that 750 uh, crore plus run rate uh, and second is is this the bottom in terms of a quarterly run rate it may not grow but uh, do you see that this is the bottom in terms of uh, the quarterly performance in the us specifically Yeah, uh, good question, Sai. So I, I, I would say it's uh, we're still watching the U.S. market closely. I don't think we can say with definitive, uh, you know, when the demand will fully come back because I told you it's a function of these three, four factors. How quickly do they deplete the high inventory that they have? Uh, second is how can they scale up the execution, which is a constraint, and then obviously their internal metrics around you know looking at the higher interest rate, etc. How quickly they want to deploy their capital. in principle in our conversations with customers the intent to roll out continues to be strong so it's more a function of you know going through the inventory and the other elements that's why what we have been saying is that it will be two quarters what i just shared uh, you know finn is few minutes back is that it could be up to you know one more quarter where it takes that kind of time uh, also when we look at some of our peers in the industry that's also similarly what we understand not only for stl but also for our peers that it could be even up to end of this calendar year that it takes to complete uh, to run through the inventory and and the fresh ordering become, comes through so what i shared is that you know to your specific question this is the time period it will take for us to get back our volumes principally <coughs> our, our customers uh, customers remain committed with us we are their preferred partners in in, in many of the of the large customers uh, plus as we have been able to start supplying from our us facility to them that will also increase with we do share a good relationship with the customers uh, what we are doing in the meantime is to ensure that to saturate our facilities we are looking at ensuring that we uh, increase our volumes in other markets like apac india and the middle east got it got it 
so uh, uh, just just to uh, harp on this a little bit more basically do you expect that, that whenever this bounces back i'm not saying yeah. q3 q4 sure. but this bounce back will be uh, to the older levels or you feel that that may take a much longer time like when you did more than 750 crores in a quarter uh, yeah. from 450 to 750 will this bounce back be as sharp whenever that is to happen or that, that sure may- so I, I think, uh, you know, I, I would say, see, it's a function of both things, uh, you know, uh, volume and, and realization, right? So I think uh, both things uh, we are uh, looking at closely. Uh, there could be, again, it's a function of uh, timing of the orders, other things. So we could have some reduction in realization, but I think structurally, from a volume perspective, we continue to see that to be strong. Uh, again, it, it's a function of how quickly the depletion happens, particularly with our large customers, both in tier one operators as well as some of our distribution partners, we do see that volume coming back. Got it, got it. Uh, second question is on the optical margin. So it's commendable that in spite of the operating uh, deleverage, you guys have delivered like a 22% uh, margin on the optical side. Uh, so uh, if you can uh, help me understand like what has changed because uh, uh, we were seeing improvement uh, in quarters before that from the freight cost and some other cost uh, elements uh, reducing but uh, how have uh, like what has uh, aided this uh, uh, improvement in spite of an operating deleverage and once say your revenue goes back to your peak quarterly level uh, do we now look at a much higher base in terms of optical EBITDA margins uh, going forward uh, versus your earlier uh, range of say 20-22% that you had been uh, uh, guiding? So do we now at a higher revenue base look at much higher margin? Uh, I'll make one comment and I'll pass to uh, to third. I think it's two things we'll have to uh, keep in mind. Uh, sorry, one is how will our realizations, particularly in US market, move going forward? And, I, and that's what I was adhering to earlier. I think that's something, you know, today we can't fully commit the same realizations. There could be some reduction in realizations uh, going forward. So that's something we just have to watch on, on where that could take us. I think the second part overall on margins, to your point, is also a function of how we see, uh, you know, the interconnect scale up. Uh, may not be very substantial in second half and then it could further increase in, in, in the next year, for example. So I just keep these two X factors in mind of what could also drive the margins, uh, you know, going forward. Yeah. Yeah, Sunny. Uh, so uh, to your specific questions, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, this quarter also, in spite of the fact that uh, we have uh, lower volumes and, uh, you know, uh, in spite of the fact we have been able to improve on the overall margin, so all our efforts are, uh, you know, we are putting our all the efforts to ensure that we are at this kind of a margin, uh, in spite of the fact that we have the challenges maybe in terms of making the volumes. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, as an organization, we are committed to maintain that kind of a cost basis, whether it is a direct spend or indirect spend to ensure that we are able to maintain the right profitability for that particular business. So uh, our approach is more disciplined as compared to, uh, uh, you know, uh, in past. So it is more, uh, it is going to uh, balance in terms of whatever, whatever we may have the impact in terms of realization. If realizations are at the current level, I'm sure that we'll be able to improve uh, on the overall margins. That is what is uh, my outlook. Got it, got it. And if I may, I have one more question. Uh, so on the global service business, uh, uh, we did we have again shown like very good margin uh, performance. Uh, so again, some outlook on how should we look at margin yeah. going forward? Is this the base uh, going forward? Can we see some improvement or this is the level that we should uh, work with going yeah. forward? Yeah, so I think there's, there's two parts to it. Uh... Uh, you know, as we said, we are uh, definitely focused on any projects we take on, whether private sector or in the public, uh, we're very conscious of of the margins and the cash. So I think that's, that's definitely a very strong discipline, uh, you know, with uh, the CEO Praveen and, and, and his team for this business. Um, so I, I think that's something we, we continue to watch uh, closely. And I think we're uh, we continue to see how we can, uh, you know, keep these margins and see to improve them as well. The X factor certainly for our services business will be the Bharat Net project. 
uh, which we should have better visibility in the in the coming months. But clearly, you know, that will be a large, you know, three, four, five year, uh, you know, execution that will, uh, you know, that will happen. Uh, and then maintenance of that, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, so I think that's one X factor to keep in mind. Uh, I would uh, I would keep one caveat. We still have uh, challenges with our UK business. We had talked about break even. It's it's been in that range of break even or or marginal losses. Uh, so that's something we're watching closely on how we can turn that around, uh, so that overall you know the profitability of of services can also uh, improve. Uh, so I hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you uh, for the detailed answers and uh, look forward to a strong turnaround in the coming quarters. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sunny. Uh, so we'll take a few questions from the chat in the meanwhile, sure. which which has come. So uh, one is on the digital business. So when can digital business be a bit positive? And second is that, uh, you know, can can we give some more color on the strategic partnership that we have signed with SAP and Google? And what, uh, how are we looking at it in the long run? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, on the uh, uh, on the first part, as I said, we are looking at break even in in quarter four and and probably get to positive uh, EBITDA in in Q one. Um, I think as we reiterated, we have a, a strong team in place. We have uh, you know over nine fifty consultants. We have over nine hundred crores order book. So I think all the investments that STL has done into this business, uh, you know, this is the right time where the you know business scales up. Uh, and starts performing. So we are, we are, I think we're at that that phase. Um, I think uh, specifically, uh, you know, to your question, um, you know, in terms of the um, uh, the details of the business, um, I can just give you some more details. So essentially, we have uh, tied up a partnership with uh, uh, you know SAP, which is a market leader in ERP. Essentially, the objective is to you know help our clients to upgrade to resilient future proof and scale ready operations and we are essentially enabling them to be you know cloud enabled uh, for their business modernization and some of the key features of sap uh, you might be aware with is for example uh, you know their rise with sap that they have so essentially the partnership you know pairs our digital services um, you know with c suite advisory and strategic implementation uh, along with SAP's market-leading expertise in enterprise software and cloud solutions. Sure, thanks, Ankit. Uh, we'll take one more question from the chat. Uh, uh, can you talk about the working capital movement in the first quarter? So, uh, um, as you know that uh, you know uh, we uh, we have three businesses uh, in terms of optical network, uh, service business, and a digital business. Uh, optical network in the service business is a working capital light, uh, while the major uh, working capital requirement is generally for the service businesses. As we continue to execute uh, 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 and progress on some of the, the, the contracts that we have been awarded with, uh, the initial till the time we don't achieve those milestones, we continue to uh, uh, invest in the working capital that all will get released once we start to achieve the milestone, which is required as per the tender condition. So for this particular quarter, yes, uh, we have made some investment in working capital for our GSB business. Sure. Thanks, Tushar. Uh, one more question in the chat is that uh, for the USA, how much time it will take to clear the inventory? Any data points, uh, if, if you can give, uh, that would be helpful. I think we touched on it so broadly, uh, as we said earlier in the last performance uh, call, it would take two quarters. Our current view is it's somewhere between two to three quarters is is what we see. We're tracking, uh, you know, announcements by our customers in our conversations as well. We're seeing how we can support them. Um, and at the same time, we ourselves are looking at other markets uh, to, uh, to increase the volumes. Thanks, Ankit. We'll take probably one last question from the line of Mr. Kaushik. Poddar again. Kaushik, you can ask your question. Can you give us, uh, give us the rationale for this uh, separation of the service business? And will the service business include your uh, digital also? 
Uh, no, so uh, Kaushik, this is a standalone, what we call a global services business, where we do large scale deployment of, of networks and we do system integration. So it's purely uh, that vertical. Um, so Kaushik, we had shared the, the rationale uh, last time. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, reiterate and, and, and Tushar can, can add, but, but essentially when we look at, uh, you know, the businesses uh, we are in from our perspective, our customers, and then we look at various stakeholders, uh, you know, looking at, uh, you know, investors, and we look at what is the underlying capital model of the businesses. Uh, we clearly saw that particularly when we look at the optical business vis-a-vis -vis the services business, these are fundamentally very different models, uh, you know, where clearly a lot of working capital is required uh, for the services business vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, optical is essentially more capex heavy, needs more investment in the manufacturing. Uh, one business is, 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 you know, fairly global tier one telecom operators where we provide our cables and connectivity and other is more system integration and more EPC kind of business. And also then looking at feedback from various stakeholders, we also realize that the investor base very often is quite different for these, uh, and investor profile is quite different for these uh, businesses. So clearly the intent is to scale up, uh, you know, both the businesses, the optical business as well as services. And then we, you know, looking at feedback, looking at inputs and advice, we felt it's best to look at a demerger. So both both the businesses would be listed uh, separately as a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. And we do believe this will enable the right kind of investment into the two businesses separately and will help to scale up uh, both the businesses. So that's at a high level, the thought process. Uh, we are confident, as we said, that uh, probably by Q1 of next year, uh, we should complete this uh, process and it will enable the growth of uh, both the businesses. And digital Hoshik, is not uh, part of this service business, right? No, that will stay with uh, the current STL. Okay. So, uh, Kaushik, the detailed scheme of uh, demerger uh, is already uploaded uh, on the website and it's also available with the stock exchanges now. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Thanks, Kaushik. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we come to the end of a question and answer session. And I now hand it over back to uh, Ankit Agarwal for closing remarks. I'd like to thank everyone for attending this call, uh, showing interest in our company. And we hope to be able to address and clarify all your queries and uh, comments. Uh, I'm personally very, very excited with uh, how we see STL going forward. Uh, we really are taking an Indian brand uh, globally and setting global benchmarks for manufacturing. We are really living through our purpose of, uh, you know, connecting the unconnected and transforming billions of lives. I'm also very happy with our impact, how we're enabling our country to move forward on 5G, how we're supporting our defense networks, and we're connecting the remotest people of India on high quality optical fiber. So very, very bullish on playing our own role to make uh, India, uh, you know, to take India forward. Uh, for any further comments, uh, questions, and discussions, please feel free to contact our investor relations team, uh, which includes myself and Tushar. We really look forward to continuing the conversation with you in the near future. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you. Jai, you can stop the recording.